Trinity Expose number 33. I'm going to finish it here. This is going to be the last one of these Trinity Expose, and I thought I'd pick the number 33 because Jesus was 33 when he died on the cross. And I'm going to tell you right now, what you believe about Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, will determine where you're going to go for all of eternity. Let me show you a bunch of scriptures here. Mark chapter 12, verse 29. And Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. There aren't three Lords. Okay? I mean, even think about that. How can you have three kings, each one with total authority, total power? The Bible says about in him dwelleth all the, you know, or is, uh, I'm thinking about dwelleth all the uh, fullness of the Godhead, but that he might have the preeminence in all things. It says another one of the Trinity exposed uh, videos I did. Um, Jesus Christ has, he has, he is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords. You can't have three lords. You can't have three kings. They wouldn't have total power. And you can't have three gods. Three gods is not total power in one. Three persons is not total power. One Lord. One God. Mark chapter 12, verse 30. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Do you love the Lord thy God? You say, oh, yes, of course I do. Um, do you believe it's Jesus and God the Father and the Holy Spirit in one? Get back to that in just a minute. You say, well, how do we know that the word Lord is talking about Jesus Christ? John chapter 13, verse 13. Ye call me Master and Lord, and ye say, well, for so I am. That got Jesus in a lot of trouble right there. Going around saying, I am. That's God's title from back in the Old Testament, the book of Exodus. Men aren't supposed to say, I am, as a title. Jesus said it. Why? Because he's God the Father. They're the same being. Acts chapter 9, verse 4 and 5. And he fell to the earth, talking about Paul here, well, Saul at the time, and he heard a voice uh, saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. I am Jesus. The Lord said. Jesus is identified as the Lord. Right there. Acts chapter 10, verse 36. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, He is Lord of all. So, well, yeah, he's, he's Lord of all, but then there's also God the Father, He's Lord, and the Holy Ghost, He's Lord as well. No, because then that would be a lie. Jesus Christ is Lord of all. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Definitive article, the Lord. Lord. Whenever you have the in front of a singular word, you're talking about only one, which lines up with all the other scriptures. There aren't three lords. There's one Lord. And it's not three, piece, three people, three persons, but they all share the title of Lord, so it's only one Lord. That's insanity. Revelation chapter 19, verse 16. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Hmm. Matthew chapter 4, verse 5 through 10. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time they, thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt me, because I know God. Oh, no, it doesn't say that. It says, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them, 
and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith, saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. All throughout the Bible, over and over again, the Lord thy God, him, him, him. Singular. You see, well, no, it, it, it's talking about God the Son. You can't get that from the text. Unless you're desperately trying to cling to a pagan polytheistic uh, idol called the Trinity. Then you get all kinds of stuff from the Bible. John chapter 20, verse 28 and 29. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen the two of us, the Father and the Son, it says, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. I haven't seen the Godhead. I don't know exactly what Jesus Christ looked like. I can't, you know, I have to live by faith. I accept him by faith. So there's a great blessing to me. But those disciples, they were looking at him. In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. One man, 100% God. Not a third of God. 100%. You see, it affects your salvation, what you believe about the Lord Jesus Christ. If you just believe He's Jesus and not the Lord, then you can't get saved. And here's the real thing. Here's the real reason why so many people cling to this Trinity thing. Let me show you. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 13. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, He is God, that's the title of God from the Old Testament. All throughout the Bible, nobody's called capital L, Lord, except for God. And shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on them, no, it says him, him, one being, shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord, singular, over all is rich unto all that call upon Him, not them. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know, the devil and his minions came up with this term called Lordship Salvation. And I've been dogged by this thing for years and years and years. The first time I heard of it, I heard somebody and they said about my salvation message, I wrote, quoted these scriptures. I was just quoting scriptures. And I said, pray to the Lord and I'd say, Lord. And, and, and they say, oh, you're guilty of Lordship salvation. And I thought, um, so I should get saved and not call Jesus Lord? And so this term has been invented. And they'll try to apply it to anybody that says there's a changed life after salvation. Things change when you get saved. And, you know, Jesus Christ becomes your Lord. Oh, Lordship salvation. They created a term and they browbeat Bible-believing Christians. Those of us that are genuinely born again, that have had that change, that supernatural change in our lives, they browbeat us with this Lordship salvation, Lordship salvation, and they try to put this on us. They're lying. There is no term. Just like there's no Trinity. There's no God the Son, God the Spirit. There's no three persons. None of this stuff. These people are servants of the devil. Understand that. That's why they'll put things on you and try to make you a heretic when it's in reality they are the ones because they're adding to the scriptures. The Bible condemns works of righteousness to be saved. Absolutely. And there's a lot of people out there that try to work their way to heaven. They reject Jesus Christ as Lord, you see. He's just a sub-God, which is exactly what the Trinity teaches. The Trinity, they can talk, you can talk all you want about the Trinity, but when it comes to the reality of the issue, Jesus is a sub-God. He is just one of three gods. He is not 100% totally God in one man, one being. No, they don't believe that. It's three different persons, three different gods. 
only one of those gods died on the cross. You see? That's why you come to these people and you talk to them about the change and the fight against sin and you preach against sin. They'll get offended. You know why? Because their salvation is a figment of their own imagination. That's why they don't want to call upon the name of the Lord because they don't believe He is the Lord. He's not God the Father. God the Father uses the title Lord. Jesus uses the title Lord. They can't be two separate Lords because it would cancel out being called the Lord. I mean, it's just... But see, this is why I can't get through to a lot of these people because Jesus is not their Lord. That's the whole thing. I preach hard against sin and they get mad at me. And they say, I can still continue in this sin. I can still do this stuff. And, I, and they'll try to say, I teach sinless perfection. I see, teach that you have to you become sinlessly perfect after you get saved. That is nonsense. What would be the point of me preaching against sin if Christians become automatically sinlessly perf, you know, perfect? <laughs> if there's no more struggle for sin or struggle with sin and things? That'd be ridiculous. Why should I even preach on sin then? You get it automatically. You, you're sinless. You know, it's insane. But see, this is the issue. This is the whole thing with this Trinity concept. Because if you can demote Jesus Christ, if you can kind of bring Him down to where He says, My Father is greater than I. You see? That's talking about the two different gods there, you see. You see, you bring Him down. Well, then, uh, you know, you can kind of take a lighter attitude towards sin. He doesn't have to be Lord in your life, you see. That's the issue with this Trinity thing. I mean... You say, well, well, but they, we believe, you know, the Trinity believers, we believe that Jesus is God. Uh, no, you don't. Let me illustrate my point. My wife comes to me someday and she says to me, uh, do you love me? And I say, yes, I do. She comes to me and she says, uh, do you love me? I say, yes, I do. But, well, that, I just put a conditional clause in there. The but thing there just this and all, you know, what I just got done saying, all right? I love you, but, and I throw in some other kind of a thing. See, what are you talking about? Do you believe that Jesus is God? Yes, but he's not God the Father. Well, he's not God. Just as simple as that. Hey, are you going to pay me the money that you owe me? Yes, but, you see what I'm saying? If you don't believe that Jesus Christ is 100% completely God, you'll die in your sins. How do you know? John chapter 8, verse 24. I said therefore unto you, that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am He, ye shall die in your sins. And you read the context of John chapter 8. He's talking to them about God the Father. And he says, if you, don't, if you believe that I'm not He, God the Father, if you don't believe that we're one and the same, you're going to die in your sins. You see, that's the issue here. People want salvation, but they don't want the Lord in their lives. They don't want a king over them saying, don't do that, put that down, you're in sin, I'm going to have to chasten you now. They don't want that. That's why these heretics come out and they say, you don't have to call upon the name of the Lord. You take salvation for yourself. You just say, it's my belief, it's my, I don't even need to confess anything, I don't, need to, I don't ha need to have conviction over my sin, I can just take salvation. That's the whole issue. These people are on their way to hell. Jesus is not their Lord. He is not God the Father. There it is. What a foolish thing. I cannot understand how anything in this world would be so attractive that you would reject the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't understand that. I mean, what in the world? What is worth it? And then die in your sins and go and burn in the lake of fire for all of eternity. All the while professing to have this relationship with Jesus Christ and yet there's no change in your life. And yet you can continue in sin and there's no conviction why? Why? I don't get it. And I try to help people. I try to help you to realize that Jesus Christ is God the Father. He is the Holy Spirit.
In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. But you reject it. The people out there. There's nothing I can do for them. I tried. I'll see you at the Great White Throne Judgment. If you believe in the Trinity after watching all these videos, you're going to be at the Great White Throne Judgment. I'll see you there. And you're not going to be able to point at me and say, Brian Denlinger never told me the truth. He preached to me the Trinity. I didn't know. He preached to me that I could continue in my sin and, and whatever else. He didn't tell me the truth. You're not going to put that on me. I told you the truth. And you rejected it. You reject God's book. And you reject the Lord. That's the whole thing. If you've watched these videos and you are saved and you've come to a greater, deeper understanding. I know I have. Uh, again, a lot of these, a lot of this stuff here, this wasn't even my own, you know, understanding or whatever. This is the brethren, friends of the ministry, the body of Christ, put those things out there and they said, hey, brother, what about this verse? What about that verse? And I'm looking and going, wow, this is, what, what a blessing. You know, it's been such an amazing thing to be able to go through the, the scriptures. And there are so many more that I, you know, didn't even cover go through the scriptures and you just look and you say Jesus is completely God he is God wow my Savior my Lord he's God completely God and he died for me and I can know him personally I'm not going to get up there and have some sub-God that I have to deal with Him and, and God the Father is over some other place and I kind of have to get permission to go. I'm going to see my Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Holy, completely God. And there's, are there things I don't understand about the Godhead and how things work? Well, of course. Great is the mystery of godliness. But I know He's God. What an amazing thing. And I want the Lord in my life. You see, He purchased me with His blood that He shed on the cross. And so, since He bought me, He now has the rights to tell me what to do. He put a yoke around my neck when He saved me. And He said, Brian, I don't want you to watch those movies anymore. I don't want you to listen to that heavy metal anymore. I don't want you to swear anymore. I don't want you to this and I don't. He tells me what to do. He changed my life supernaturally. I'm not the same man that I once was. I thank the Lord for that. I thank the Lord that He was willing to buy me and that He's patient enough to tell me what to do and to lovingly correct me as a father does to his son when his son messes up. And I do mess up. I do make mistakes, certainly. Uh, I get angry sometimes. I say things that I shouldn't say. Absolutely. And my father corrects me. You see? Whatever you believe, I'll tell you what, get it figured out. You got one chance, one life. And you mess it up, you believe in these pagan traditions that come from this wicked satanic cult right here? You believe in this kind of junk right here? You're going to end up in hell with them. And I'm not going to be with you. Whatever is in this world is not worth you going to hell. Give it up. Give your life to Jesus Christ. Make Him the Lord of your life. You want to accuse me of being Lordship Salvation and whatever else? And oh, I mean, I, I can tell the truth and explain things over and over and over again. I just People keep saying the same lies about me. Whatever. Call me whatever you want. I know who my God is. My Lord. My King. The one who bought me. The one who changed my life. I pray you do the same.